بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحباب hasten to do good deeds and strive your best to avoid the muharramat and be on istiqama and this is advice first and foremost to myself and then to my brothers and sisters in islam and may allah forgive us all of our sins and bless us with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah ayyul ahbab allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem so hasten towards all that is good and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem and march forth in the way which leads to forgiveness from your Lord and for Jannah as wide as are the heavens and the earth prepared for al-muttaqeen, meaning the pious ones, those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in a hadith, an Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Badru bi'amal as-salih فَسَتَكُونْ فِتْنٌ كَقَطْعِ اللَّيْلِ الْمَظْلُومِ الْمُظْلِمِ يُصْبِحُ رَجُلُ مُؤْمِنٍ وَيُمْسِي كَافِرٍ وَيُمْسِي مُؤْمِنٍ وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرٍ يُبَيْعُ دِينَهُ بِعِرْضٍ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا بِعِرْضٍ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا رواه مسلم Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala and who reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Be prompt in doing good deeds before you are overtaken by trials or tribulations, fitan, which would be like a part of the dark night. A man would be a believer in the morning and turn to disbelief in the evening. Or he would be a believer in the evening and turn disbeliever in the morning and would sell his faith for worldly goods. And this is collected in Sahih Muslim. Ayyul Ahbab. This hadith tells us of some of the calamities that we'll see on the day of judgment, the day of resurrection. And due to the fact that these calamities will come, some of the signs is that Iman and religion, you know, the deen, will lose uh, their value to people. And there will be a race for wealth. So much so that people would not hesitate to compromise their religion and faith to acquire wealth. And as we see, Ayul Ahbab, this is uh, what we see even today we see that secularism is being widespread. In, in so much so, it affects the believers. So it has already affect, affected other communities like the Jews and the Christians, that in their societies, the secularism and the secularization of the code of law and the secularization in people's conduct to where they're no longer responsible to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that instead they're only responsible to what they feel is right and what they feel is wrong. If they feel it's okay to marry a man, then it's okay to marry a man as a man. And if they feel that it's okay for a woman to marry a woman, then that's okay because they feel that that's appropriate. Ayul Ahbab, that can never be the case of the mu'min. The believers can never accept that. The believers can never compromise their religion for this type of secularism. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And the main point of this hadith is it is illustrating, as Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned, it is to hasten to do good deeds. And an encouragement to have those good deeds accepted and to strive your utmost to do that and not be deluded by the dunya, not be deluded by this worldly life. Naam, the worldly life has value to us. It doesn't mean that you 
you you don't have any possessions and you do not care for anything in the world. No, but you use this world as a means, not an end, a means to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal and not as an ends in and of itself to pile up wealth. Ayul Ahbab, something very important, and we're going to look at this hadith in another sitting at another time. But one of the things that some of the ulama have mentioned, like Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, about this hadith, that when the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, Yusbihu rajulu mu'minin wa yumsi kafirin. He said that a believer, a, a, a man would uh, be a believer in the morning and turn to disbelief in the evening. So the scholars say there are different statements with regards to this. And as, as I said, we'll explore this with detail in another sitting. But one of the interpretations that Ahla Ilm, the people of knowledge and fiqh and understanding and wisdom, the scholars, the ulama of Islam, one of the interpretations, Ayyul Ahbab, is that it is, isn't that the person is going to be necessarily leave Iman in totality, but in fact, he will do the deeds of disbelief. So, for example, how does this apply to us? For example, the person who prays and fasts during the day, and in the evening, they drink alcohol and do things which are not just unbefitting of the believer, but totally impermissible for the believer. Or they commit zina, they fast during the day and they commit zina at night. There are people who even go to this level. They have a uh, an aspect of good and then that aspect of evil and their desires that overtake them. So this is one of the aqwal of Ahl al-Ilm, one of the statements of Ahl al-Ilm, one of the interpretations with regards to this hadith that a person perhaps may not totally leave the religion, but it is if they leave the religion, because how do you fast during the day, and then the night you go on a date with your girlfriend, and commit acts of fisk or fasad, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by all of his divine names and attributes, to forgive us of our sins, and bless us with ikhlas, with thabat, and protect us from kufr, shirk, wa nifaq, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the believers everywhere and grant them relief and strengthen us in Iman, Islam, Ihsan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.